the latest inflation numbers definitely showing signs of prices, especially gasoline, easing a bit. But they also show that prices for many key items you need in your home remain high. Newsmax chief White House correspondent James Rosen has that and more on President Biden's statements that inflation was zero percent last month. He's live there in the North Lawn. Good morning, James. Sean, good morning to you. President Biden spoke on the inflation numbers yesterday at the start of an event in the East Room uh, where he signed into law the PACT Act. That's a measure that will expand health care benefits to veterans who've been exposed to toxic substances. Vice President Kamala Harris uh, spoke on the inflation numbers yesterday at an event focused on abortion in Nevada. It quickly became clear that they were both speaking from the same script. Today, we received news that our economy had zero percent inflation in the month of July, zero percent. Here's what that means. While the price of some things go up, went up last month, the price of other things went down by the same amount. The result, zero inflation last month. Today we learned that our economy had zero percent inflation in July. And that means that there has been a, a drop of price in terms of gas, airfares, clothing, household appliances and more. Now, yes, inflation was unchanged from the month of June when it rose 1.3 percent. But year to year, Americans in July still paid 8.5 percent more than they did in July 2021, according to the All Items Index contained in yesterday's release by the Bureau of Labor Statistics of the Consumer Price Index for last month. That 8.5 percent rise year to year was down from the 40 year record 9.1 annualized increase posted in June, but not by much. The price of food is up 10.9 percent from this time last year, another 40-plus year high, tweeted Republican Senator Tim Scott of South Carolina. President Biden can try to spin it however he wants, but the American people know that today's inflation report is bad news. Now, speaking of South Carolina, that's where President Biden and his family are vacationing, the entourage having alighted at Joint Base Charleston yesterday en route to Kiowa Island where Mr. Biden stayed three times as vice president. Also along for the trip, the president's son, Hunter Biden, seen helping presidential grandson, Bo Biden, off Air Force One. Senior officials in all administrations caution that no president is ever really fully on vacation. And frankly, since the advent of the iPhone, that's probably true for every working American. Nobody's ever fully on vacation anymore. Uh, but nonetheless, in addition to his briefings that he'll receive and the calls he'll make, uh, we expect that President Biden is keeping an eye on Congress. And as you reported, the imminent passage of the so-called Inflation Reduction Act, which we would expect the president to sign and uh, not wait until his stay in Kiowa is over before signing. Sean. I'll tell you what, Kiowa's beautiful. We couldn't have picked a better place to vacation there. We continue to follow that story and more. Oh, yeah. Uh, Chief White House correspondent James Rosen there at the North Lawn, on the North Lawn, rather. Good to see you, James. Thanks so much. Uh, joining, us now, joining us now, rather, for reaction is New York Republican Congresswoman. She is also the member of the House Foreign Relations Committee, Claudia Tinney. Congresswoman, good to see you, and thank you so much, and welcome back to National Report. If I could get uh, your reaction there uh, to James Rosen's report, uh, specifically there with the wholesale prices dropping to 9.8 percent from the 11.3 Inflation at 8.5 percent from 9.1. If you look at it in that lens and you look at it from the White House lens of saying that inflation has risen zero percent, do you agree with that messaging? Why or why not? No, it's ridiculous. First of all, it's static uh, messaging because they're looking at raw numbers, not at what's actually happening. And, and as uh, James Rosen reported, it's the highs actually 40, or, 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 excuse me, it was Senator Tim Scott. We are seeing a 40-year high in prices, but the actual on-the-ground pricing is really high because of the supply chain issues and because of taxes in New York. And also just, it just the average, the cost of gasoline alone and fuel and diesel, all those things are really affecting uh, the ability to get goods to the market. So I, I think the prices are, I've never seen the prices like this in my lifetime, even under Jimmy Carter. So uh, they want to look, you know, month to month that it appears on a static number that it's low, but the actual uh, pain to the consumers is actually a lot higher. And many economists also point to the fact that is it because supply 
could be down because the prices are so high. Uh, there is a sobering way to view these numbers, and they can be broken down. Uh, either way, that is the messaging from the White House. I'm just curious. I'll move on to another point. But I wanted to ask you about the Inflation Reduction Act as being called by the Democrats, uh, arguably, according to economists the, uh, um, uh, and other outlets as well, this won't have anything to do with inflation. Do you foresee this passing in the House without any issue? Is there any hope that maybe there are some Democrats, from Republicans, there are some Democrats that will go against this? I hope some Democrats step up, because if you were to look at this so-called Inflation Reduction Act, it's actually the opposite. When you're in the situation we're in where we have very high energy costs, uh, we are lagging behind in our energy production, actually in our energy, meeting up with our energy, energy needs. We're actually producing almost at maximum capacity, but we don't have the refining capacity uh, for oil and gas. Uh, when you look at inflation alone, just the prices and the cost in the supply chain, and you look at the amount of money that we have flooded into the market over the past year and a half or so, uh, what the Democrats have done is exactly what we shouldn't be doing, raising taxes, taxes on the lower and middle income taxpayers, hiring 87,000 more uh, weaponized bureaucrats from the IRS who are going to go after the lower and middle income taxpayers. They're not going after the billionaires and the wealthy people because they can afford lawyers. They're going to go in and shake down people who can't afford. Here's what you owe. Even if it's more than what you owe, you're going to end up saying, I can't afford a lawyer, so I'll just pay it to make them go away. If you take this 87,000 new weaponized IRS agents and add it to the weaponized crew we already have, it's about the same size as the U.S. Marine Corps. This is how massive it is. And they have weapons. Let me tell you what they should be doing, because I know as uh, a, a member of Congress right now, serving my constituents, we are overwhelmed with claims from the IRS for average taxpayers. Why not a taxpayer advocacy group to come in and help us deal with the backlog that the IRS is experiencing instead of weaponizing them to go after even more taxpayers and exacting more money out of them? They're not going to affect the billionaires. The billionaires can afford lawyers. They can afford accountants. They're going to be continuing to get the loopholes because guess what's also in the Inflation Reduction Act? They dropped the carried interest uh, tax uh, increase and that was done by Democrats like Kirsten Cinema and Joe Manchin to help them. Plus this bill, I don't know how much pork was added to get Senator Manchin to yes, but he was a no for a long time. Everything in this bill is going to cause greater inflation and greater pain on the middle class Americans who are struggling to make a living right now. Yeah, House expected to vote on that tomorrow. Running out of time with you, I wanted to bring this conversation back to New York City, if I can. Uh, this war of words between Mayor Eric Adams of New York City and the governor of Texas, Greg <laughs> Abbott, uh, over busing migrants from Texas to New York. It's been a back and forth uh, uh, exchange in public. Um, here is a soundbite. This is from Mayor Adams on that. He is a anti-American governor that is really going against everything we stand for. He's a global embarrassment uh, because this is not what we do as Americans. Uh, Adams claiming their New York City doesn't have the capacity to deal with the thousands of migrants. Uh, talk to me about that um, in, in, from, a, a, again, a national lens. Not everyone lives in Texas or New York City, but they're watching this play out. Your thoughts? Yeah, first of all, he's in competition to compete with Mayor de Blasio as the worst mayor in probably New York City history with this type of, of, of words and behavior. But look at this. It's a sanctuary city in New York City. A lot of these Democrats have created sanctuary cities. They don't enforce our federal laws on immigration, and they do not have nearly the number of people coming across the border. On average, there are 5,000 people a day coming in just one sector of Texas. Add that to the, the tens of thousands coming in across all sectors. And the Texas uh, government is being forced to take care of this because Biden and the administration and New York refuse to enforce our southern border laws, refuse to protect us as Americans. They are empowering the, uh, the cartels that are human trafficking, drug trafficking, while we have a major fentanyl crisis. New York City has crime, has drug problems, has uh, violence like we've never seen in, in so many years, all because of the policies that Mayor Adams refuses to enforce as a sanctuary city. And also, he is prioritizing criminals over victims. That's why this uh, poor beleaguered bodega worker that was just trying to protect himself has gone to safe haven back to the Dominican Republic because it's sure. safer there than it is in prosperous New York, once prosperous New York City mm -hmm. and once more safe.
A lot to watch. That story continues. Also, this story, I'll close on this, the FBI raid <laughs> of, of President Trump's Mar-a-Lago home. Again, this has been days and days, no response from the DOJ or the FBI on this investigation at this time. I know that you were with President Trump recently, and I'll show the viewers your tweet. Uh, great to be back in Bedminster for dinner with President Trump tonight. I am grateful for his continued support and endorsement for New York 24. Thrilled to report he's feeling better than ever despite the Democrats' in endless smears against him, Trump 2024. I'm curious to know, obviously, the president going through that probe with Letitia James in New York, and now he's dealing with the raid that happened there on his home. Um, political ramifications of that happening, being splashed in the headlines, really leading every news organization. What was the feeling that you got from him spending some time with him? Well, I was lucky enough to sit next to him and have a, a, a great conversations with him. He was very positive. He was very forward-looking. He is, uh, wants to save this country. He genuinely cares. He knows he's under siege, and he has been from even before he got elected when the Russia collusion hoax was started by the FBI that raided his home. And what people aren't talking about is President Trump actually allowed uh, investigators to come in to his home in June and throughout the several months before this raid, go through his house. Even, they even went back and said, you know, we suggest you put a better lock on where you keep your secure items and memorabilia from being the president of the United States. And then out of the blue, uh, this raid occurs, and the warrant was signed by a judge who actually had recused himself from hearing cases uh, with President Trump because of his bias and prejudice, which he stated in his recusal document. Why all of a sudden, months later, is this judge signing a warrant to raid in an unprecedented way the former president of the United States home when the president had been cooperating. This is impeachment four. This is because the two failed impeachments, the January 6th committee, which is a predetermined outcome that they, they re-up whenever they need it, an abuse of power on every level. Now they're doing this raid to try to try the president, you know, put him through a public trial, uh, with, which was needless. The president was cooperative. He was even there helping them back uh, when they went through his home before. But anyway... I mean, this is ridiculous. And the president, I know, recognizes it. He has a lot of supporters out there. I think in the end, this actually helps the president and helps us in the midterms because people realize that we have a two-tier justice system. If you're in the Democratic Party, you're protected. If you're Hunter Biden, you're going on Air Force One on vacation with the president of the United States. A couple of developments I'll share with the viewers uh, later on this show in regards to that story. Congresswoman Claudia Tenney joining us live here. Uh, always great to see you. Congresswoman, thank you. Thanks so much. Great to see you, too. You, too. J.P. Morgan CEO is warning that an economic hurricane is coming. Are you preparing? If you don't do anything, your 401k could be a 201k, and that is not good. So call our trusted friends at Lear Capital. For 25 years, Lear has helped investors own gold to protect against market chaos. It's a good thing. They can help you, too. Get your information and up to $15,000 in bonus IRA gold. Just call this number, 800-880-4300. That's 800-880-4300. Thank <laughs> you.